Uh, you ever hear someone say, here I go again, right? Maybe it's 2023, right? And maybe you made some New Year's resolutions already and you're already blown them. Just this morning you came in about having any more sweets and you made the mistake of passing by the cafe <laughs> and you had one of those chocolate donuts. Here I go again, here I go again, here you go again. How about this, everybody? How about we make it, here I grow again? How about that? How about this? We believe, here I grow again. No, not here I go again, here I grow again. I know 15th, uh, here is January 15th, and we're almost past a couple weeks have gone by, and maybe you've been to the gym. There was a big, long line for the treadmill. Now it's a little shorter. By the time February 14th passes by, you'll have the place to yourself because everyone will have a box of chocolates and give up. So, uh, you know, it, 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 it's hard to change sometimes, isn't it? Sometimes it's hard and it gets frustrating and maybe you've done it a while. I met a resolution not to make a resolution. But, you know, what if there's one thing that you could change that would make a difference in everything? One thing. Imagine, pick one thing that would make the most difference in your life. You know what, everybody? This one thing would affect us all and make us better in every category. You know what that would be? Put Jesus Christ first. That's number one. That's number one. And this is why we're having 21 days of of prayer and fasting. We want to put God first in the first part of our year. And that this is what happens. We seek his kingdom first and his righteousness. And then all of these things will be added to us as well. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow has enough worries of itself, sufficient in the day's trouble. That's right from the words of Jesus. And he tells us to seek the kingdom of God first. And all of these things will be added to well. So the best year you're ever going to have is the best year you'll have spiritually. And so it's the number one, all of us, and we'll do that. That will make the greatest difference in our lives. And I want to encourage you with that. But I I think that's we often struggle with that. And our theme for 23, I know it sounds a little funny, but it's, it's true. A growing godly me in 23. How many people want that? A growing godly me in 23. Here's a sentence. I got it in prayer. I know it's uh, Dr. Seuss, but uh, Dr. Seuss made a lot of money. And you remember green eggs and ham? So it works, right? A growing godly me in 23 through the spirit with the body you'll see. A growing godly me in 23 through the spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, with the body, that's the church, will be a growing you'll see. And I believe that. We believe that. We believe the best year we'll have. If you'll commit yourself to spend time with God daily, and you commit yourself to being a part of a body and being involved with other people in the church and you get to know each other and pray for each other, you will be a different person a year from now. It's all spiritual. And I hear a story of a, a little boy that fell out of a bed and his parents heard a big boom and went upstairs and said, what happened? Well, mom and dad, I, I got into the bed too close to where I got out. <laughs> and sometimes that's what happens to us. We keep on doing the same thing over and and over and over again. Why do we need to grow in our faith? Because our faith is the most important aspect of our lives. Everything else is great, but the most important. I want to encourage you that we should be moving on to a higher level every year. We should be growing. And this is not a to make you feel bad. This is an invitation for all of us to make a change because all of us have a system. The system that you and I choose, the way we live our life, brings us to where we're at. And so the best thing we can do is learn to change the way we live our lives today. We'll talk about that in a few moments. But in Hebrews 6.1, I like what the Living Bible says. It's a paraphrase, but I think it's true. And this is what uh, the author of Hebrews says. Let us stop going over the same old ground again and again, always teaching those first lessons about Christ. Let us go on instead to other things and become mature in our understanding as strong Christians ought to be. So From here we go again to here we grow again. Let's grow. Let's grow. Now, the question is, why are we so complacent? Why do we give up on the dream? I think part of the reason is we get tired of not seeing success, right? We want to succeed at something. Why are we so content to stay in the shallow end of the pool when God is calling us to such greater things, everybody? He is. God is calling us to greater things. Not someone else's greater things, but greater things for you. I think God wants all of us. I know God wants all of us to grow closer to him. I I don't know about you, but a year from now, I want to be giving more. A year from now, I want to have healthier relationships. A year from now, I want to be healthier physically and mentally and spiritually. Question is, are you growing in your faith? And that's the most important thing we can do. 
Are you growing? Am I growing? Are we coasting? Are we just going through the motions? You see, the more we commune with God, the more he will commune with us. And there's nothing greater than being in the middle of what God's called us to become and do. It's the greatest thing around. So how do we grow? How do we grow? How do we grow? How do we become more like God? Well, the truth is, systems will develop your growth. I happen to believe that all truth is God's truth. So whatever you, when you find something true, it's God's truth. When you find a lie, it's not of God. And so God will give us truth when we observe things, behavior patterns and situations. And so the truth is our systems bring us to where we are today. How we live our lives, our schedules, the, 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 the brass tacks of what you do every day bring you to where you are. The truth is we all have systems. We all have systems. You are, you're going to have the same results next year as you have now based upon your systems, your schedule, how you and I live our lives. Systems are not bad. Jesus had a system, for example. In, in Luke chapter 4, verse 16, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as was his, what does it say? Custom. That means he had a system, right? He went into the synagogue on Sabbath day. He stood up to read. Jesus, before he began his ministry, he took 40 days in the wilderness to pray. Before he picked his disciples, he was up all night praying. Before he went to the cross, he spent time praying. He had systems. When his disciples were with him, they were busy doing a lot of things. He said, hey, guys, let's get alone to a quiet place. Let's get a place to refresh ourselves. He would get his disciples by themselves and teach them privately. Can Jesus ever get you by yourself and teach you privately? Or are you only with the crowds? And this is how you and I grow. You have to have to have systems. Make sure we have good systems, a new year, new possibilities. I like what John Maxwell says, a, a pastor, now a, a, a success person. He says this, I can predict the long-term outcome of your success if you show me your daily habits. So this whole series is about a habitat. I remember my friend got married in New York City at a botanical gardens, a beautiful place. It was the middle of the winter, and there was snow outside, but in the botanical gardens, it was beautiful. There were lush trees. They had a tropical area. They had flowers. They had birds flying. It was absolutely beautiful, not to mention the fact that the shrimp were the size of my thumb, and that each plate was like $300. That was back in 1994. Can you imagine? I prefer a country wedding. Okay, pigs in a blanket, and you're good to go. But back there, it was an expensive endeavor. But I remember being there in the middle of the winter. I was thinking, man, this is awesome. Why can't we be this way? Why can't you and I have a habitat that is full of growth, that is not dependent upon the surrounding circumstances? You see, what God wants us to do is build a greenhouse for a habitat. And what builds the greenhouse to create a habitat that is not prone to the outside influence is this. Habits create a habitat. A habitat creates growth. So godly habits or discipline, where we get the word disciples. Jesus says, go and make what? Disciples, disciplines, habits, procedures. Those are important. They don't save us, but they help us grow. So we, what you and I want to do, we want to change our habits, change our habits to build a habitat where we can have holiness. Holiness is an invitation to wholeness because God wants us whole. In his way, holiness is set apart for God. What would happen if I set apart my mind for God? What would happen if I set apart my relationships for God? What would happen if I set my, the money I have aside for God and it became holy? then you'll experience ultimate wholeness. So it's our system. You know, Jesus never says, gee, I wish I had more time to pray. He had a system in place. He had a procedure he had in place. He had systems, and he taught his disciples for three and a half years how to do it, how to pray, how to fast, how to relax, right? So many of us make New Year's resolutions, but 92% of them won't last by time Valentine's Day goes, let me just tell the guys something. Go to the dollar store and buy your wife or girlfriend now a Valentine's card now. Or you'll be stuck with none left. Do it now. After this, you'll be very happy you did. Okay, that's a little, that's for free. How many of you ever felt this way? That you keep on trying and you keep on failing? Uh, how many of you just said, I'm going to stop eating sweets and your wife buys chocolate chip cookies from Costco and you eat it? How many of you ever said this, I'm not going to spend any money in Costco today, and you walk out, you spend a... Listen, is it possible to go to Costco and not spend $100? <laughs> I 
Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just, I like Costco. Okay, they should pay me money. I should work Kirkland up here. Okay, I, I like Costco. The first store my kids wear was Costco. Okay. All right, I'm sorry, everybody. I just like Costco. Okay. I see a lot of you in Costco, by the way. <laughs> I do, I do. And by the way, it's Costco, not Costco's. Okay, I want to make that clear. All right, back to our originally scheduled program. You ever feel like the Apostle Paul? I mean, you keep trying to do the same thing. You keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. Here's the Apostle Paul, by the way. I love it. The Bible is so real, and it's so honest, and so, like, it shows... It's not, it's, not, it's not a selfie. The Bible's not a selfie with a filter. It's, the Bible is the lights on as soon as you get up in the morning. It shows the ugly bedhead. Listen to this. Here's the Apostle Paul speaking. I really don't understand myself. For what I want to do is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Let me read that again. I really don't understand myself. Can I hear? Oh, no. For what I want to do, what is right. For I want to do what's right, excuse me, but I don't do it. I want to do what's right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. Am I the only one? Okay. I want to stop eating junk food. Uh, I, I want to stop procrastination. I'll start tomorrow. I mean, we just go on and on and on with this. Verse 18. I want to do what's right, but I can't. I, I want to do what's good, but I don't. I, I don't want to do what is wrong, but I do it anyway. Oh, what a miserable person I am. Who will free me from this life that is dominated by sin and death? The Apostle Paul, like many of us, we want to do the right thing. We want to have better relationships. We want to read our Bible. We want to be healthy. We want to get along with the outlaws. We want to do all these things, but we don't do it. Right? We keep on repeating the same thing over and over. And it gets tiring. I hate losing. So let me change the rules of the game. Let me lower the posts like in my driveway where we go from nine feet high to four feet so I can slam dunk it. But it doesn't really work that way. Look what the Apostle Paul says in the next verse. It says, shift the thinking. Here it is. Thank God the answer is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. The answer to changing our life is found in Jesus Christ. You see, the first Adam, that's the first one that made the sin mistake. And what, when you and I are born into the first Adam, that's why we have the sinful nature. Jesus came and made the second Adam and made a way for perfection. And he started the process in inwardly. And you and I can find that freedom through Jesus Christ. You see, with Christ, all things are possible. In 2 Corinthians 5.17, I want to encourage you with this. Memorize this. Here it is. Therefore, if anyone, look at your neighbor, says you're an anyone. It says so are you. If anyone is in what? Christ, he or she is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I'm reminding of you what we read last week. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus, not yourself. You see, disciples, disciplines, habits, and systems are all possible with Jesus Christ. It's not really possible without him, though you may try. So let me help you understand why, what are some of the reasons why you and I fail on our New Year's resolutions or try to change. I'm, putting, I'm turning over a new leaf. And, then, you, and then, then your tree gets cut down. Well, here's one reason. Number one is this. We have goals, but no plan. I want to be a better husband. I want to be a better student. I want to lose weight. I want to establish world peace. Good luck for that. Right? So I, I, I want better relationships. And, and, and we say these wonderful goals. But... They're just nothing but dreams. I like what Je James Clear says this. He says, winners, losers, and successful and unsexful, unsuccessful people all have the same goals. No one begins their football season saying, I want to be the worst team in the league. No one goes to the altar to get married. Gee, in about five years from now, I want to lose my family, and I want to lose all my money, and I want to get divorced. No one does that. No one comes and says, I, gee, I want to get high blood pressure and diabetes, so I'm going to eat all the bad food I can. No one says that. We all want to have a good marriage. We all want good relationships, a healthy job, a healthy career, right? We all want that, but why don't we have it? Every sports team wants that, right? So here's, here's the truth. Goals don't determine our success. Systems 
determines success. Now, pastor, you saw like a, a TED talk. This is not a TED talk. Let me say something very clear. All truth is God's truth. And so when I see God's truth and I employ it, it works. Truth is, goals don't determine success. Systems or disciplines or being discipled determine success. Look what Luke says in Luke 14, 28. This is Jesus speaking. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. I want to build a tower. That's a goal. Now, what's a system to build that tower? Well, won't you first sit down and estimate the cost? That's the plan. To see if you have enough money to complete it. So it's important to have a plan, not just have a goal. And Jesus is basically talking about salvation in that, but the principle, it remains. For example, Daniel had a system. Daniel in the book of Daniel. He used to fast and pray three times a day. There's a reason the man was so powerful and so powerful because he fasted and prayed three times a day. I don't know about you. I want to have a successful life. But you know what a successful life is? A successful life is a successful day. A successful day makes a successful week. A successful week makes a successful month. A successful month makes a successful year. And so what Daniel is to do, and, and by the way, if you can't have a successful day, how about three times a day like Daniel did? How about in the morning? Lord, I give you this day. Then lunchtime. Lord, I give you the afternoon. Then the evening. Lord, I give you the evening. I mean, he prayed three times a day. He gave God the first and the best all through the day. And look how powerful he was. He had a system for success. You know, I can't think of anything greater than that than to constantly give the day to God. That's the best way to go. Frankly, it is. You see, Daniel did that. See, we think that we think we need to change the results. I, I, I need to lose. No. <laughs> what we need to change is the systems, not just the goals. It's the systems that get us there. For example, uh, you think about driving a car, right? Driving a car. Habits are wonderful. Habits can hurt you or they can, hurt, they can help you or hurt you. You get in a car and you drive. And you don't have to think. You put the blinker on, you merge your traffic. It's all easy until you teach your kids how to drive. Oh, my Lord. Teaching your children to drive is, uh, let me just, I never called on the name of Jesus like I did when I was teaching my children to drive. <laughs> Jesus Christ, help! I mean, literally, I might say, Lord, help us. My parents never had to worry about that with me because I used to sneak driving the, the car during church services. <laughs> my dad would be preaching. I'd go in the back door and drive in the park, and I was terrible. <laughs> and so when my dad told me how to drive, I knew how to drive already. But... The issue is when you're learning how to drive, you have to think of all these things, right? And then what happens? You get used to them. So now you don't have to think anymore. You just drive. I, sometimes I'll drive uh, my daughter to school and I end up driving to the church. Well, Dad, you're going to the church. Oops, sorry, because I get a habit. So what we want to start doing is creating a habitat of good habits, habits that will bring us growth. And so it's not just a goal. What are the systems to get us to the goal? If I want to have a good marriage, I have to spend time with my wife. I got to set up a date day, a non-negotiable. What are you doing Monday? I'm so, I have an appointment. What are you doing at 6 o'clock in the morning? I have an appointment. It's my time with God. You see, you have to put systems in place or it will not happen. We need to do that. We need to change the system. I need to read more of the Bible. Okay, that's great. Well, how are you going to read the Bible? I'm going to read it. If you don't make a plan to read the Bible, you will not read the Bible. You need to set a time, a place, and a plan. So I've been reading through to, uh, the Bible in a year for the last 20 years. It's the, I'm telling you right now, the what has helped me grow the most is my time with the Lord. Even this morning, before I came here this morning, I spent some time at my house. The whole house is asleep, and I'm having time with God. Not working on the sermon, but literally spending time reading the Word of God today. And I was blessed by it. I spent time, and I created a system. And then God starts to speak to me. It's wonderful. And that's what you want to do. Have a plan, okay? 21 days of fasting and prayers is a, a start to that. You may have a power lunch. Join us together at 12 o'clock noon, either here in person. You see, you don't rise to the level of your goals. You rise to the level of your systems that you've established. That's the truth, everybody. That's the truth. You, you rise to the level, not of your goals, but of your systems. What have you put into place makes it happen. We don't have goals. That's why we, we fail sometimes. Uh, we have goals, but we don't have a plan. We need a plan for our goals, not just a goal. Number two, here's one that gets me. We don't see progress fast enough. You're fasting and praying, and you get in the biggest argument you ever got with your children. 
right? You say, Father, I'm not going to give him to temptation. And you fast and you pray and you go to school and you end up doing something you wish you didn't do. And you're like, what good is it? I try and I try and I fail. You know what I tell people when the enemy says, well, a lot of good that reading Bible stuff did. I go, yeah, devil, if I didn't do it, I'd be in prison. <laughs> so thank God I do what I do, right? Um, you know, how about I want to I, I save money. Well, how do you save money? You need to plan. This is the hard part. I need to cancel all the subscriptions. Have you guys noticed a subscription to everything? Paramount, Disney Plus, I mean, it's unbelievable. How about this? I don't want to play as many video games. How about you set a time? A time and a place, and then when it's over, it's over. I'm telling you, it's important we do this. How about this one? Well, I'll just skip church. It's no big deal. No, you keep skipping church, it becomes a habit. The Bible says, do not, do not deny meeting together as some of you made the habit of doing, but also more the often as you see the other day approaching, join together. It's easy to get into bad habits. For example, I love going to the gym. I know it's, I know it's easy to see that, but the problem is, <laughs> why are you guys laughing? There's a reason why this is untucked. Okay, I'm just kidding. Uh, but seriously, I mean, Part of the best thing to do, and, and I was talking to another a gentleman in our church named Steve. And he says, the best thing you can do is put your sneakers on and just, just walk, the, walk around the neighborhood for 30 minutes. Start someplace. That's how you start. You start small. And no matter what it is, start reading five minutes a day if you have to. Keep a system going. And this is how we change. And even though you want to do it, I want to I go to, I love going to the gym. I really, I enjoy it. But it's a pain getting there. It's a pain to getting sweaty, coming back, taking a shower. But you have to make a, pro, a progress of it. And so here's, the, here's a wrongly, this is a lie. Small decisions don't matter that much. Yes, they do. Small decisions on an ongoing basis creates habits. I just read recently, I thought it was 21 days to create a habit. Now they're saying 87 days or 90 days creates a habit. So we want to get in the right habit. Our life is a sum total of our small decisions that we make. It's the small decision. A successful life is nothing but a series of successful days. You see, you rarely wreck your life with one decision, although that can happen. It's a progression of the same thing. You have a piece of chocolate cake, you're not going to gain 1,000 pounds, right? You ever see that commercial, they eat a donut, and it goes, whoop. It's not that way, right? It's just little decisions that you make. That's a lie, right? Galatians 6, 9 says this, And let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season... We will, in due season, we will reap if we do not give up. So do not grow weary in doing the right stuff. You keep doing the right stuff day in, day out, day in, day out. You listen, everybody, if I had an opportunity to literally see Jesus face to face like my dad did, my dad had an experience with Christ when he was 16, a supernatural experience, and it changed the course of his life. And if I could have that same experience, I would like it. But I'd rather spend every day with the Lord in my Bible reading and prayer than having one experience with him in my life because that will not sustain me. What will sustain you and me is a daily regimen, a daily pattern of life that will make all the difference in the world. I'm telling you right now, it's, it's not as cool, it's not a big epiphany, but I'm telling you, if you spend every day with the Lord and you keep doing the right thing, keep on doing the right thing, you'll see the change you and I are looking for. For example, uh, in the water boils at 212 degrees. So if the water's 80 degrees and you bring up to 140, you're like, where's the progress, right? Where's the progress? Now it's 205, where's the progress? Then it's 211, where's the progress? And all of a sudden, at 212, it's boiling. So you keep going the right direction. You keep, you keep being nice to your spouse. You keep being nice to your parents. You keep working hard at work. You keep putting your head down and working hard. You keep it, keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. And eventually, you're going to see you'll get that pay raise. You'll get your relationship better. I'm not guaranteeing it, but I will tell you that the chances of it go a lot higher. And you'll be pleasing God. So it's the things that no one sees that bring the greatest results. It's the secret successes that give us the public successes. We're learning that on Wednesday morning with the men's group. We're, we're learning through the life of David. We're meeting at 6 a.m. and having sausage and bacon. Can I hear an amen? Bunch of guys getting together. I encourage you to come. It's not too late. Come on on 6 o'clock on Wednesday mornings, and we're talking about uh, an, an imperfect man, but he kept doing the right thing. He kept turning himself right. His heart was right. And God wants us to be a wholehearted men to make a difference in the world. And that's why we're meeting on Wednesday mornings. That's why I encourage you to get involved with smaller groups. That's why I encourage you to find that. And right now, we're looking to recruit small groups. Maybe you can have a Monday night football group. What good is that? You get together, you pray, you watch football. 
All right. Hey, I don't know. Maybe you need to do a Romans book study or, or study how to how to grow your family or uh, how to have a start a business. Start a small group. Be with other people. Learn to grow. That's a little side note. Okay, let's back to our originally scheduled program. You see, the first reason why we blow our goals is we have goals but no plan. The second reason why we don't see progress fast enough. Be patient. One thing I've noticed as I get older, time goes faster, and I notice. Set it right, keep it going, and it will take care of itself. That's the way it goes. And here's the most, I think, one of the most important points today is this. We focus on doing instead of being. We focus on doing instead of being. You see, the enemy loves to remind us of our sin problem. Our sin does not define us. Our Savior defines us. Our sin does not define us. Our Savior defines us. You see, our distorted identity sabotages success. There's a reason why the enemy goes after our identity. You are this. You are that. Why is there such confusion about identity? It's not because of a political agenda. It's a demonic agenda that's fooling us, Get you to believe a lie about yourself. If you think something bad about yourself, you will become what you think you are. Oh, pastor, you're into all this cold stuff. No, the Bible talks about it as a man thinks he will become, right? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. According to your faith, let it be done unto you. You see, there's something that begins to happen. Neuroscience is teaching us this, that if you will try to stop having chocolate cake, and you say, I'm not going to have chocolate cake. You're going to eat chocolate cake. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to gain more weight. You'll gain weight. Instead, I choose to be a health. I thank God that I'm a healthy person. I eat healthy food. I'm a patient student. I'm disciplined. Start talking about what you want to see God has called you to be. And the truth is, you will literally, this is not, this is not making this up. This is scientific. You, and by the way, the Bible talked about this 2,000 years ago, 4,000 years ago. Whatever you focus on, you will become. What you feed leads. If you feed the problem, it will lead you to the problem. If you feed the solution, you'll drive towards the solution. That's just the way it is. Uh, that's just the way it is. I want to look to where I want to go, not where I do not want to go. If you're walking across a tightrope, across the Niagara Falls, which I don't recommend, I'm told what you need to do is look where you want to go. And you don't look down where you don't want to look where you want to go, and that's how it works. Keep your eyes upon Jesus, the author and the completer of our faith. You see, an unhealthy identity creates unwise habits. If you think you're a failure at relationships, that's what's going to happen. You're going to fail at relationships. Unwise habits reinforce unhealthy identity. And then... That's what happens. So we want to do is want to have a proper identity of yourself. I am a child of God. I am worthwhile. I'm on the winning team. Jesus won the Super Bowl. I'm a, I get the Super Bowl ring. I may not have run the play, but I'm on the team. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So we got to start believing that. See, the Holy Spirit will convict us of righteousness. And by the way, the Bible says you're righteous. You're a child of God. I'm righteous not because of me. I'm righteous because of what Christ has done for me. So what happens is I had to start believing that I, I am righteous in Christ Jesus. That's a noun, not a verb. It's been done for me. Believe it. You see, we need to turn our goals into want to instead of I should. Most people have do goals. I need to read more. I need to get more sleep. I need to eat better. I need less social media. Can I hear, oh, no. But I encourage you to start saying the other. Be goals. Not I need to pray more. I thank God that I'm a person that prays. Not that I need to read the Bible more. I thank God I'm a person that reads the Bible. Start talking about where you want to go. That's the place you will go. What you think about, you will go towards. What you feed, what you lead. What entertains you, trains you. Make no mistake. What you look at, what you think about, that's what you'll drive towards. You can drive toward error. You can drive towards uh, heresy. But if you drive towards God's truth, which is his word, you're going to not only be great in your mind, but great in spirituality as well. Because you can believe a lie and be mistaken. And have a positive attitude, jump off a cliff and die because you think you're a bird. But get in an airplane and you'll fly. You see the difference, everybody? It's not just thinking the right thing. So most people do goals. I encourage you to be goals. That's what it's all about. I choose to do that. I thank you, God, that I'm a godly man. I thank you that I have self-control. I thank you, God, that I'm successful in business. I thank you that I manage time well in Christ Jesus. I don't do it arrogantly. I thank you, God, I can do all things through you. I thank you, Father, that I, I am good at relationships. I thank you, Father, that I can control my emotions. I thank you, Father, I can end the service on time. 
<laughs> I think. <laughs> it's your identity. Healthy identity creates positive habits. Positive habits reinforce healthy identity. Do you know God wants you to do you know what God wants you to become? Start planning that. I want to be a man of God. I want to be a man that my grandchildren say, how did you, I want my grandchildren to come up to me and say, I love Jesus. How do I do that? God, I want to, pro I want to produce children that serve God. How do I do that, God? I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to put them in environments where they can grow. I want to start doing that. If someone wants to walk in purity and wholeness, I don't hang out with the guys after, after work getting cocktails around scantily dressed people. I go home instead. You, you follow me? You make a choice. So identity shapes actions. What you do, what you do believe determines what you'll do. It's the truth. What you do believe will determine what you do. So let's change what we think about ourselves based upon God. You see, when you know who you are, you know what to do. So, for example, I gotta stop smoking. No, I am not a, uh, I'm not a smoker anymore. I don't overdrink. I don't want to drink her anymore. Uh, I care about physical health. I mean, you start saying what you are. I'm a good husband. I'm a good father. Talk, telling yourself that because the enemy's like, you're a bad husband. You're, you're. No, I'm a good husband. I'm a good student. I get into good colleges. I get good jobs. Start telling yourself the truth and start driving towards that truth. Well, that's just the way I am. I can't change. No, that's not true. Remember this, everybody. Romans 6. It's not just about positive. This is about God. Romans 6, verse 6 and 7. We know that our sinful selves were what? Crucified with Christ. So that sin might lose its power in our lives. We're no longer slaves of sin. For when we died with Christ, we we're set free from the power of sin. Verse 18. Now you are free from your slavery to sin and you have become slaves of righteousness. I have died to that. The Bible says... You're under no obligation to listen to your sinful nature. I know my sinful nature tells me I have to do these things. Society says you have to do what you feel. No, I do what's right, not what I feel. Who cares how I feel? I do what's right. Feelings are nothing but servants that can never be masters. The truth is, our, is the master. Feelings are servants. And if the servants aren't listening, you fire the servants. Stop making your emotions control your life. Our culture is way off base upon this. It's not what you feel. It's what truth is. And truth has a name. It's Jesus. Amen. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. What it says in the Bible about me is what it says in the Bible about me. I'm, I don't care what everyone else says. I don't care what I feel. I am a child of God. God put me here for a reason and a purpose. I have intrinsic value to God. Start believing the truth. Who are you are in Christ? I am loved. I am forgiven. I'm worthy. A healthy identity creates positive habits. I am a disciplined person. I am a good student. I am a loyal friend. I am a healthy person. Start speaking God's truth in your life and you'll drive towards it. Don't listen to the lies. However, if you say you're a healthy person, you're eating pizza, it doesn't help. Although a little pizza never hurt anybody. I'm convinced if Jesus was alive today and was here, he would not have multiplied fishes and loaves. It would have been pizza, and it would have been meat. Who are you in Christ? You see, how do you do what you want God? How do you change? Know what God wants you to be. In Romans 12, uh, I, this is another verse to memorize. Therefore, 12, 1 and 2, Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God. You know what mercies of God means? It means you didn't give it yourself. It's something God gave to you. By the mercies of God, not by your own hard work, but by the mercies of God, present your body. So what we're supposed to do is present ourselves through God. A living and holy sacrifice. Yeah, it's gonna hurt. Lay yourself down. Acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And listen to this, everybody. This is so important. This is what we're talking about. This kind of summarizes the whole message. And do not be conformed to this world. Do not be shaped what opinion polls say. Well, everyone's doing gummy marijuana. Who cares if everyone's doing gummy marijuana? 
Who cares if everyone's sleeping with, their, with someone else? Who cares if someone's cheating on their taxes? I don't care what everyone does. If they want to be losers, let them be losers. I'm going to be a winner. I'm going to follow God, right? Therefore, I charge you by the brothers, and, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. How? By the what? Renewing, metamorphosis. That's the same Greek word where you have a, a, a caterpillar goes into a cocoon and becomes a butterfly. Metamorphosis. So how do we do it? Right, let me read it again. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You and I need to get brainwashed. Can I hear it again? At this church, we believe in brainwashing. Lock the doors, ushers. The Kool-Aid is coming. No, I'm just kidding. We believe in brainwashing. I got a messed up brain, but I have a mind of Christ in Jesus' name. Identify the problem and find the solution, all right? And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will is. Well, I don't know what to do. Transform your mind, you will know God's will. That which is good and acceptable and perfect. There's an old song, when I'm 64, when I get old and losing my hair, I don't, I don't like that. But what do I want to be when I'm 75? What do I want to be when I'm 90, Lord willing? God, I want to drive towards what you're calling me to do. I want to be a raw, wise steward. A guy takes care of what he's been trusted to. I want to be a wise steward of my body, of my family. Listen, everybody, I want to spend more time with my children. I have to literally make time for it. If I want to have a better marriage, i got to make time for it. If I want to grow in Christ, you got to make time for it. Make an appointment. Make a life pattern. It won't happen otherwise. See, what you... What you let God, why don't you let God define who you are? No single action changes your identity, but multiple actions consistently over time. Here's the good news. You don't have to be perfect. Just take the next step. Here, here's, here's a formula. Here we go. Small, smart choices. Small, smart choices. Can you all do that? Small, smart choices. Come to church. I'm going to come to church at least three times a month. I'm going to read my Bible at least five days a week, okay? Small, smart choices plus consistency plus time equals radical difference. Stop trying to conquer the world in a day. Take one little step. Take one little step. Take one little step. There's a great song that we have during the holiday season. Just put one foot in front of the and soon you'll be Okay, you guys are, okay. <laughs> Before you know it, Christmas will be here. We'll be watching that again. Put one foot in front of the other, and soon you'll be walking out the door. Ho, ho. Okay. I'm sorry. You know what that is? Get over it. Okay, I'm sorry. But I want to encourage you with that. Okay, we have goals, but no plan. Change it. We don't see progress fast enough. We focus on the wrong instead of doing the right thing. No. Don't do life alone. Listen, everybody, small, consistent changes on an ongoing basis makes all the difference in the world. Remember, everybody, small choices, consistency. Small choices, consistency plus time equals radical change. Okay? Is that clear? That's what we need to do. It's so simple. I know it's simple, but we don't do it, but we can do it. Okay? Small, 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 smart choices plus Time and consistency equals radical difference. Let's pray. Father.